What's up, everybody? This is Alex Quinn, and this is the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. Today, we are with James Preventure, hey. managing partner at Barry's Miami. What's up, man? How are you? Hey, I've been wanting to do this for quite some time. I'm very grateful that you're here, man. I'm super happy to be here. Last time we were going to do this, um, you were going to Italy. We were going to Italy, and then we went to Nashville, and then we were in Asheville, and then we just got back. So now we're, we're settling back in. How was Italy? Tell me. Italy was amazing. It was like a last minute trip that we planned a, like, Leisure? a, a week before. Yeah. Yeah. So we had booked tickets like a year in advance because they were super discounted. And I was like, oh, we'll just change the dates. And then it came time to actually do the trip. And I was like, oh, I'll change them. And I called the airline. And they're like, no, they're non refundable, non changeable. So I just called my boyfriend. I'm like, well, we're going to Italy next week. So that's the type of call everybody wants to get. Yeah. <laughs> Pack your bags. You're leaving next week. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, it worked out perfectly because we were able to go and like it wasn't tourist season yet. So we actually get to like experience real yeah. Italy without all the tourism and everything else going on. So you did like a little tour of the country, like went to different cities and stuff? Yeah, so we started in Lake Como and then we did a couple <sighs> nights there. Then we did Cinque Terre um, for a couple nights. We did um, Florence for three nights and Beautiful. went around Tuscany and then ended in Rome and flew home. Beautiful. Yeah, so a quick 10 day little jaunt and ate our way through Italy. And, and the, the beautiful thing is that you, you think when, when you're about to leave, because I went to Italy last year, it's like, you're like, dude, I gotta come back here. Yeah. I, I saw nothing. Like, I saw so much, and at the same time, I saw nothing because there's so much to do over there. It's the first time I think we've ever been on a vacation where I'm like, oh, I could stay here for an extra month, two months. Usually, like, yeah. after 10 days, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go home now, but... You know, that does happen a lot when I travel. Do you think it's work-related? Like, it, like... For me, the 10-day mark is like crucial on a trip. I, I, I saw getting antsy. I think I usually get sick of the food or I get sick of, you know, wherever we are. But yeah. because Italy, I feel like, has so much to offer and the food is so phenomenal. Like, that was probably my driving factor there. <laughs> um, you can always keep me anywhere with food, so. And their fashion and, and, and just the way they de their delivery. They're so smooth, you know? Like, it, it just, feels just, nice just being the whole, the whole culture. Everything is based around, like, food and wine and, Family. Like, yeah. So, like, that's all for me. I like their values a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It's good to go out there. And they're just so friendly and, like, they're so welcoming to America. Americans, which is not always the case when you go overseas <laughs> yeah. i kept apologizing i'd be like sorry we're american and they're like no we love americans you guys are so forgiving and i'm like yeah, i guess we are <laughs> <sighs> some of us have made a bad name for for the rest of us huh? i know it's okay it's okay we uh, try our best to, to to rectify that yeah we try our best you, so you, do you travel a lot or is this something that was out of like left field no we travel a lot yeah yeah we i mean we're on a plane probably like every month or every other month that's beautiful, man. What yeah. a blessing. So, I mean, yes and no. I feel like now my boyfriend's going to kill me because, like, he's like, no more travel. Like, we can't we can't be gone all the time. You know, you you could be productive while traveling for yeah. your business. You know, you you have your businesses and you have them very well set up. Um, your boyfriend is able to work from from wherever he is, really. Yeah, he's remote as well. But it's not the same, right? Like, you try yeah. you try to, but when you're on a trip, you're kind of like in like in like an enchanted land oh it's all beautiful and then hours fly by and right. before you know it the emails are stacked up right. and then you're trying to rush to the hotel but i was me in rome last year at the hotel just like clicking away and stuff you know we're like the same though like we, neither of us like we're like oh we're gonna work out we're gonna do this and do that we never work out <laughs> we never do work i'm like i don't even take my phone with me sometimes i'm like when i want to disconnect i fully disconnect and yeah. when we travel that's what we try to do so we can't do it too too often <laughs> yeah but i mean you, you're pretty active on the workout stuff you could take a little break on your on your trip i mean your business yeah. is really to to fitness That's berries true, right yeah. let's dive into berries man how did that happen or how did you get into fitness so i mean this is gonna sound like a crazy story but um back in like 2007 i was here in miami uh the university of miami mm -hmm. and i started watching this tv show keeping up with the kardashians <laughs> and i kept you know obviously i got sucked in like the rest of the world did and all of us did we were watching it then i moved to new york and then i was in la uh by 2010 ish 2009 mm -hmm. 2009 i moved to, to los angeles and I realized that the workout place that Kim was going to was a block away from my house. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go check out this like Barry's boot camp place. And at the time it was like a very small, like tiny little, you know, hole in the wall place. There were, mm -hmm. They had two studios, one in Sherman Oaks, one in West Hollywood. Um, and my first day working out, I did like six in the morning. And at the time Barry would partner you with people and he partnered me with this girl. And I was like, God, she looks like Kim Kardashian. Like, I can't believe it. So like finally, like a weekend of us working out together, I'm like, has anyone ever told you you look so much like Kim Kardashian? She's like, I am Kim Kardashian. Oh my God. So that was like kind of like what got me like through the doors. Right. But then I fell in love with the workout because I was a fat kid. So like I really struggled with my weight and, you know, being active. And uh -huh. so for me, I finally found a workout that was super stimulating. I loved being there. I loved the culture around it. Yeah. Um, it had everything exciting to me you know, at the time. The celebrity par portion was exciting. The nightclub kind of type feel was super exciting to me. And mm -hmm. then just kind of like the mood, the ambiance. Not, yeah. yeah. And like not thinking and like be able, being able to like just go in, shut your mind off and you're going to just like be 
you know, guided, told, told what to do, and you just do yeah. it. That's incredible. Yeah. And what were you doing at the time? At the time, I like was, professionally, I was working for a company called Quintessentially, which is like a global concierge firm. Okay. And then I had left that, and I started my own, essentially, like version of it with like uh-huh. a small set of private clients. Okay. So one of my clients, who's now my business partner, Whitney Cronkey. Um, she was one of my clients at the time and you know we were both going through some stuff in life and I was like hey like come do this workout with me so I would go pick her up in the morning and she started doing berries with me <laughs> and so then we, we you know it was a couple years went by and we were going all the time and we really liked it and then there was this one trainer who was super hot and his name was Derek who's now our other business partner <laughs> and Derek you know we couldn't figure out if he was gay or straight so we're like oh like he's gonna go home with me now he's gonna go home with me and it was just kind of like this like running joke that we had right um, turns out he's very straight, but like people still think he's teetering on, on either side. Right. He'll, okay. he'll never correct anybody on that. Um, but he left to go on tour with Britney Spears. Um, he's the one that kind of brought her back down when she had kind of fallen off the wagon and you know, right. health wise and um, went on tour with her for the Femme Fatale tour. So when wow. when that tour is finished, he came back and he was like, oh, I, you know, Barry's is franchising. I want to I want to own a Barry's. And he came to me because he knew I had some clients that could put, potentially invest. Um, and then we all sat down together and we realized that we want to do it together. So we wow. all ended up moving here from Los Angeles and buying the rights to South Florida. Which is incredible. Yeah. Out of all places in the country, this is the spot, especially right now. But at the time, this was 2013 and 2012 and 13. Really 2012 was when we started, you know, look, looking at real estate and like kind of being serious about it. That's when I was graduating high school. Yeah. Like nobody... Miami was kind of just like the the party place that no one really wanted to go to. It was like people thought it was like a little trashy. And obviously I went to college here, so I knew what Miami was. And I had a really good sort of built-in structure here from my previous job. I worked for a PR firm before. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was here for Art Basel with one of our clients. And I called everybody. I'm like, hey, why don't we do Miami, Florida? Because originally we were supposed to do Austin, Texas. Okay. Because my business partner, Whitney, she has a house in Austin. So we all fell in love with Austin. It was a really cool community. But I was like, I think Miami is a much more viable um, market for us to, to kind of tap into. And mm-hmm. thank God we did, because now look at look what, When happened. did you guys open the first um, location here? It was January 7th, 2000, I think 2014 or 13. Uh, you know, the, down to the date. 2013. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We always remember the first date of our business. Yeah. yeah. I remember. And how was that? How did you feel that day? Or like, were you scared? Were you nervous? Were like, did, did you feel like you were in the right place at the right time? How was, how was the, the think, mood? Um, I would say it's overwhelming because you're going in from, you know, full on construction, marketing, um, just trying to get the doors open and you go to like the last minute, like you're cleaning up until like 30 seconds before someone walks through that door for that opening party. And then you have classes, that party goes until usually like two in the morning and then the next day you start classes at 7 a.m. So there wasn't really a lot of like sleep or downtime or any time to really think. So we kind of just go into this like autopilot mode of pumping out these studios and getting them up and going. Um, but it was exciting. I yeah. mean, we had a great PR firm that we were working with, with Amy Zacharin and Zacharin PR at the time. Um, and we had a huge party and it was like hundreds of people. The entire community showed up and, you know, we opened up with full classes and it was, it was exciting. That's awesome. And where was the first location? Miami oh. Beach in Sunset Harbor. Okay, cool. Do you still have that location? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's still there. How many locations are you at now? I go to the one in Aventura. Yeah. So Aventura is the newest. Yeah. Uh, the middle baby is Midtown and the oldest is South Beach. Okay. So you have three. We have three here. Yeah. That is incredible, man. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. We used to have two outdoor studios too during COVID, but we kind of stopped that because I think people are ready to get back indoors and yeah. get back to it. But we still have the spaces if we ever need it. So crazy how like being health conscious could change your whole life. Yeah. Because you mentioned you had problems with, uh, with weight. Yeah. Um, and you did something about it. Yeah. Right. Um, so there's a few lessons here yeah. um, that I'm seeing. First lesson is health. Mm-hmm. When you think about health, and and you put health first doors op- of opportunity open up second it's relationships yeah um third is putting yourself out there too you know like meeting with people like you're over here working out with kim kardashian um maybe didn't know it was kim kardashian but you're you're, you're talking you're putting yourself out there a lot of people are maybe afraid oh, i'm gonna go work out by myself i don't know what to do i don't right. know those people so for, for some people it's like a it's a shock yeah. you know it's a, a lot of anxiety but I, I preach a lot on this podcast about putting yourself out there, making connections, taking care of your health, because, you know, at the time you were doing consulting or like, you know, uh, wh- whatever it is that you were doing, but your whole entire life changed just because you decided to put your health first. Yeah. You probably had no clue that the, all, none of that stuff was going to have own three freaking 
uh, how how would you refer to them? Gyms, we, um, we fitness say, centers, like, like fitness studios. Uh, fitness studios. Yeah. Like you would own three fitness studios in Miami. Like know. you know how things could change. Yeah. Um, and just the relationship aspect of it. Um, and and that's something um that that's very important because I remember, I remember when I first got connected with you. Um, you were like you you have a way with with words with with building relationships with, with connecting you're like hey man check it out we should work out together we should do this we should do that um we got connected through olivia and i know you know kevin as well yeah i was just actually talking about you with kevin earlier he's like james is a great man he's you know great people person i love kevin and exact he's yeah. he's one of the best communicators yeah. i know one of the best marketers i know um he come he's He's actually the person that's been most on this podcast as a guest. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, so great. we do a lot of episodes together. Um, but that's a big thing, man. Just like nurturing relationships and nurturing community because ultimately that's what brings people back to the studio, right? Like, Yeah, I would say like one of my strongest, um, I think one of my strongest qualities would be connecting people and connecting, connecting people together and connecting with people. Right. Um, I love nothing more than to like, you know, be a fixer and set people up. If you have an issue, like I know a guy, like people always used to make fun of me, but I genuinely know a lot of people. So I try to connect and you have try a to like, for a guy. <laughs> yeah. I just like, I love to connect with, connect people. You know, if I can help in any way, shape or form, then that's great. And like if another relationship or anything comes from that relationship, great, but it's not my motive whenever I try to help somebody. Yeah. But it's like my way of connecting with people. So if I have a gym and I'm like, Hey, come work out with me, come try it. Like at least come try it once and see if it's for you. And you know, it could be life changing for some people. You know, mm -hmm. I've had friends where they're, you know, parents or friends someone's passed away and instead of going to a bar i'm like no you're coming to work out like you're gonna release some endorphins and then they walk out feeling just a little bit better obviously it's not gonna fix the yeah fix it but it's like a well it, it kind of does though yeah you it know kind of like helps. when you're angry like you know you, you should work out like yeah. you know you're feeling down move that's what my aunt tells me she yeah. owns a pilates studio up, over, up here in weston she actually goes to 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 berries and aventura a lot oh amazing um <clears throat> she goes to a bunch of places and she tells me, you know, the cure for anything, like when you're feeling emotional wise, is just get move. Yeah. Get on, get move, go walk, go work out. Um, just either way, it's going to be hard, right? It's going to yeah. be hard to feel like crap. Right. And it's going to be hard to work out. Right. But well, it's so cyclical too. So if you yeah. are depressed or you're down or anything, you stay at home and you're, you know, watching TV or, you know, whatever trashy television that you like to watch when you're at home. Yeah. Um, it's just cyclical because like all of a sudden you're tired because you're home and then you're home because you're tired and you're eating and it just becomes like an unhealthy pattern. Yeah. So you, so you have to like get up and kind of shock yourself out of it a little bit. Let, let me ask you something. Uh, during 2020, did yeah. you have the three locations open? We were closed for the time that we were forced to be closed. Right. And the second we were able to open, we opened with the max capacity we were allowed to, which I think was like 15% of the time. But it was the three locations. Yeah. And that's when we pivoted and did the outdoor studios because we could fit 60, 70 people outdoors, space them correctly to the local yeah. guidelines and hold classes. So we ended up buying the, um, what do you call those? The headphones, like the, the, wireless, music yeah, the wireless headphones and everything. So the silent disco headphones. So it was like a giant yeah. silent disco workout party. And so we were able to supplement what we were missing from the indoors um, and do it outdoors. How, how did you, how did you cope with or deal with the friction that was having to shut down um, specifically something that you maybe also knew was necessary for a lot of people, which is, you know, working out, which is something that's health based. Like, how was that for you? I didn't even think I thought about it that way. I think it happened so quickly that yeah. like we were open you know friday saturday sunday and then that sunday that next monday we were closed yeah and it's like weird to watch your bank account and everything was hitting so our rent was hitting our payroll yeah, was you still hitting, gotta pay, pay people so yeah. it was like half a million dollars just gone overnight and then our bank accounts were at zero and i'm like okay like this is weird we've never not had money coming so, in so you hit zero so we hit zero right away um and we my only i hit zero too yeah I mean, I <laughs> that's, lot, that's I, why i'm asking you yeah i think a lot of people did so my first reaction was Everything else we can fix, right? So like rent, I can negotiate. All these other things I can negotiate. But then like I was so concerned with our employees because like yeah. it's their livelihood. So it's their rents and their food and their families. Their families and, yeah. you know, we have close to 100 employees. So it's a lot of responsibility. So my biggest thing was like, how can we get them paid first? And then everything else we can figure out after. So it was just everyday researching and like learning about like what was coming up for PPP and um, figuring out if we were going to have to supplement from, you know, from our investors and stuff like that. But, um, luckily right when the PPP hit was right when next payroll was due. Yeah. Um, and we were able to carry all the pay PPP 
covered our payroll until the day we opened. It ran out on the day that we opened back up. Y you were proactive. Yeah, I mean, you had to be. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out like how are we going to keep this above water? And then it was you know months and months of negotiating with landlords after. It's a it's a big emotional intelligence lesson, bro. Yeah, to deal with something like that because you know you could be doing really well in life. Yeah, whether it's uh, because you're happy, you're fulfilled, or because you're just very wealthy. Um, but life has a way of shocking the hell out of you sometimes, yeah. you know, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, 2020 kicking you in the nuts and you thinking maybe, damn, we're going to be screwed or health related issues or issues with family or legal stuff. Like it, I think it was a good learning lesson for all of us. Yeah. Um, and in many ways it was messed up. Um, the things that a lot of people had to deal with, but I put a lot of us into perspective. I, at least it put me into perspective. I think the family aspect of it, um, was really big for me because yeah. up until that point, I was in a big rush to make a lot of money and scale and grow. And I was, I was doing really well um, until that, that, that year hit, I hit zero. And then probably like five months later, I came back like better than I had ever. Right. But I went through a few months of kind of like, um, you ever heard the stories of like how um, uh, eagles, like when, when they're of a certain age, I believe they go into a cave and then they pluck out all their feathers I know, I don't know they that. fuck themselves up and then they, they grow brand new and then they fly out a brand new eagle right i feel like those months um for the people that knew and were able to have the opportunity to to really evaluate themselves and the way they looked at life and the way they communicated with people um was kind of like a new beginning right, right. um because we always have to look at the positive side of things right you know um i don't think i got like that luxury though i don't feel like i no? was able to sit there and and be like, oh, like, let me like re-explore like what I want to do in life and this yeah. and that. It was kind of like just pure survival every single day. Yeah, well, you have a hundred people. Like, yeah. And like counting on you. And then we have commercial spaces and like that are not cheap. They're like, you know, 30 plus thousand dollars a month. And then you have insurance. Like there's so many things and costs that come with these studios that people don't realize. Yeah. Per month and per day. Just like opening our doors, you know, costs us money every single day. Yeah. Um, it was like pure survival at that point. So I think now it definitely hardened me a little bit where like mm -hmm. it takes a lot to really shake me now. Like <laughs> yeah, it takes right? a lot. Like you can tell me like this is on fire. That's collapsing. This is, you know, I'm like, okay, look, we'll, we'll figure it out. Like we know that we'll figure it out now. We've yeah. kind of already gone through potentially what could have been the most disastrous in terms of, um, you know, being forced to shut down and still forced to pay rent and still forced to pay all of our bills and everything with no relief from anybody. Yeah. Um, I think it would take a lot more to, to shock me now. I think that's the, that's the part that not a lot of people talk about when it comes to business is that a lot of the times, yeah, the business owner makes good money, but during bad times, the good business owners look out for their people yeah. and they get paid last or don't get paid at all. Well, we didn't get paid for the first like three months. Yeah. So like my business partners and I were like, okay, we're not going to pay ourselves. And then we were just like kind of living off of our savings because mm -hmm. until the PPP money really kicked in, because like then I'm on salary as well. So I'm considered an employee. Yeah. Um, but we didn't take any money. We made sure like everyone else was was paid first. Yeah. Feels good, right? Yeah. To but, know that, that but my, you could do that. My thought process was also like, listen, we're going to eventually open up our doors again. I need a full staff. Like I need a full house that knows what they're doing. I can't, I don't have time to retrain all of these people. It's going to cost you more. Well, I don't actually, th yeah. I don't think it would have survived. Yeah. Like it needs to be a smooth running machine. Nobody also wanted to apply for jobs at that time. Like it was kind of like a weird time where people wanted to work, but they didn't want to work. And so it was weird. So I, in my head, I'm like, we need to have a familiar faces for when clients come back. They're going to want that sort of nostalgic, like pre COVID feeling. Um, and then they're going to want, you know, people that know what they're doing. And then we need a full staff to be able to run the ship. So we yeah. were really lucky that we, everyone came back. Yeah. Do you, how are you, how are you in regards to mentors, like a mentorship, you know, cause you have your location, your locations, you do your stuff, but you know, we always have people that we go to and people that we confide in people that we run stuff by. Do you have your close circle of, of, of maybe mentors or people that, you know, that, that keep you sane in, in moments of, of, of craziness when it comes to business? Yeah. I mean, listen, I really rely a lot on my partners. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my partner, Derek, I think he's like our head trainer. So he's more operations day to day with me okay cool um but whitney our other business partner she's she's more like the silent partner but you know her family comes from a long line of businesses and they're okay. very successful in the business world um so i rely a lot on her and then her family teams so we have a lot of resources that we can reach out to if we have any questions on anything whether it's accounting marketing like whatever it is we can always yeah. reach out 
Um, That's golden, bro. Yeah, and then like, I'm really close with my old boss. My old boss, Amy, uh, her name is Amy Zachary, and she used to do all the PR for like Related Group and Four Seasons, like a bunch of companies. It was all like luxury real estate, and mm -hmm. she was just such like a, a hard ass. Like she was so funny. I was used to say that my life was like um, the Devil Wears Prada with her, but like, <laughs> but we ended up being really close in the end. Yeah. Um, and she's always been super hard on me in the most you know, po positive way possible. She sees it in, she sees yeah. the, like, and, what and you very, could do. Yeah, and I'm very close with her to this day. Like she was texting me this morning, like we're super close now. Yeah. But it's like, you know, she, I always say that she raised me, you know, she yeah. turned me into like the more professional human that I am. I ask you the, I ask you these questions, man, because I myself like have the, like people like that, that, that have taught me or that I've worked with and I keep contact with because man, um, there's people that mark a, uh, uh, the end of a chapter and the beginning of another in your life. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always good to be grateful to that and to the, to the lessons learned. Uh, and that that's the purpose of this podcast. A lot of those people that have made a huge impact in my life um, in one way or another, I bring them on here and we talk about it. Um, one, one big impact that was for me, uh, because I, for the last few years, have been slacking on my health, was finding out about berries. Right. You know, like you, you introduced me to your community. Um, I went and checked it out and it was so crazy because, you know, my idea up until then of of fitness was go run by yourself, go to the gym, lift weights. I have no idea what I'm doing when I get right. to the gym, all these machines. I, I'm right. a digital marketer. I run ads right. for people. I make money for people. That's what I do. But you're like 99.9% .9 of people. Like people yeah. that go to the gym all the time still don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And like, you know, I think one thing that we were kind of texting back and forth is the importance of a personal trainer. You were asking me, kind yeah. of asking me about that. And I think even like our trainers have trainers. Like you always need someone to kind of guide you and show mm -hmm. you what you're doing to give you a, a proper scheduled program that makes sense so that you're not just like walking in and doing random things that really don't make sense or kind of negate what you're or doing. Or hurting yourself. Or hurting yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so whether you're, whether you have like a personal trainer at a gym or a Pilates studio or Barry's in group fitness, it's always really important, I think, to be led and taught. Cause like, we don't know everything unless you're an actual health expert. Yeah. But like I said, even like our trainers all have trainers. Cause like <laughs> even for them, they need to be, you know, looked at and taught what to do properly and to make sure like they're doing it properly. Which is key. Yeah. Cause we're always learning. I mean, yeah. There's no like an absolute truth on how to do something specifically. Things continue to grow and evolve. So it's good to see that even yeah. the people that are leading in your in your business have people like looking over and you know making sure they're tip top shape. Yeah. And it's it's also important for them too to kind of like learn new moves and new skills and new techniques for everything. So it's, yeah. we always hold workshops where the trainers will come in and like someone will lead like a five or ten minute round um and teach like new moves. And so like right. you know, there's you think there's only so many things you can do with with a workout band or a mini band, but there's like so many things that you can do. And until like you're showed it, you would never you would never assume like that could be done. Yeah, and I, I think it's also the 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 group aspect of it is really cool because you know you could go work out and then you'll slack off. I, I won't I won't finish this rep. I won't finish this set. I'll take a quick break. When when you see other people doing it, it's motivating. Yeah, like hustle inspires hustle. That's yeah. like, you know that's why I call this this podcast right. that you see people hustling doing like I, I could do it too. Right. Let's go like. And um, the music, the vibe, um, yeah. let's put, okay, for, for, for those that are listening or watching that don't know how the vibe is at Barry's, right. okay, let's go through a customer journey experience. Um, can you help me like try to put a visual perspective of what it is to walk into one of your locations, how they're greeted, what takes place, um, what, it, what it's like? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, first you walk through the front door. Yeah. Um, you're usually greeted by... Uh, one of our very friendly front desk members where mm -hmm. they'll check you in. So you go in, they'll tell you what spot you're in. So whether you are on a floor spot or a treadmill, they'll tell you the exact number that you go to. Okay. Um, they'll give you towel, water, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. um, and you could put your stuff away in our locker rooms. We have beautiful locker rooms with, you know, beautiful showers. And, you know, we have um, really high end product that we have in the showers that, yep. you know, salon quality product, mm -hmm. um, Dyson hair dryers, you name it. <laughs> um, so we try to make it feel like you're at your own home with yeah. a, you know, a luxury product and a luxury brand. Um, then you walk into what we call the red room, which is the workout room. And there is uh, 30 floor spots, whatever we call it. So they're kind of like the old, remember like the step aerobics back in the day? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've turned those into like benches. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we use that as our benches. And then there's 20 treadmills. So you do uh, 20 to 30 minutes of 
of floor work weights um, in 20 to 30 minutes of cardio, but it's broken up depending on the instructor. So you could be doing five minutes on the treadmill and then the groups will switch and you do five minutes on the floor and you keep going back and forth until you hit that 50 minute mark. Or sometimes they do what we call like a dirty 30, which is really like a dirty 25 Okay. because um, it's 50 minutes. But a dirty 30 would be like you do the full round on the treadmill and you do the full round on the floor and wh whoever's on the floor will switch back and forth. Yeah. Um, just all free weights, treadmills, bands, super simple. Uh, lighting is dark. We did red kind of down lighting. Hence so, the red room name. Correct. Yeah. Dim red lights. Right. And you always look good under the red lights. If yeah, you, you look if sexy. Like, look at yourself in the mirror. It's like, oh, shit. You, 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 <laughs> look, you look tan, fit. You just like you feel good about yourself. You yeah. can like walk in with, you know, a cold and bloated and you look in the mirror like, oh, wow, I look really good. Yeah. Um, and so like it's it's part of the sensory experience. Yeah, that. And then we have um, we bought all the old speakers from um, uh, what's the music festival downtown that happens? Every Ultra? Year? Ultra. I don't know why that still slipped my mind. So they only use the speakers for like two or three days. So we uh -huh. always buy the old speakers and that's what they put in for our speakers. You got some ultra speakers banging yeah, in there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. Okay. So they can have a lot of output and we have the like huge subwoofers. The same subwoofer, it's like literally what they use on the stage. Wow. Um. So it's a very loud kind of immersive experience while you're there. Yeah. That's what really cap captivated me. Yeah. Because anybody could work out, right? Anybody could work out correctly. Mm -hmm. But environment is key. How yeah. you feel when you go in there. You feel the energy. You feel the excitement. Right. The, uh, the trainer is in a good mood. Everybody's ready to go. Um, you know, the merch outside. Everything's cool. The bathroom, quality stuff. You know, it puts you in a mood. It's kind of like when, when, when you're working in a clean environment right. versus working in a messy environment. Right. You know, it, it's much easier to work, much easier to be motivated to do things. And that's what kind of caught my attention it's when a, I went. It's efficient. It's efficient. I like efficiency. Yeah. Anything in life, I like efficiency. If you want to yeah. like get on my bad side, just be inefficient. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I also, also think it's important to note, like when you're in there, I think people have this like preconceived notion that it's you're going to be yelled at. It's a boot camp because it used to be called Barry's, Barry's boot, boot camp. camp but yeah. it's, we dropped boot camp. We were the first ones to drop boot camp when we came to Florida. Mm -hmm. um, when we first Good opened, move. yeah, because there was a little bit of a language barrier when you read it directly. So we would get calls being like, "Oh, I need to drop my kids off. Like they really need boot camp." We're like, no, we're, we're a fitness studio. Because at the mm. time, it was like, you know, the brand recognition wasn't quite as as what it is now. Yeah. Um. So we were like, can we just drop the word boot camp? It sounds a little intimidating for people. They think we're flipping tires. Um, like yelling in their ear. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, and at one point, I think Barry's, when it first started, you know, 25, 26 years ago, it was a little bit of a militant kind of experience because Barry mm -hmm. was, you know, really amped up and just really wanted to kick everyone's ass. Um, but now it's a really supportive environment. Like I think people don't want to be yelled at. They don't want to be shamed into things. They want to feel supported. They want to feel like whether you're 300 pounds or you know 150 pounds or 70 years old or 20 years old, it's so important to feel like you're being supported and you're in a community and around people who are lifting you up. Yeah, and that's like one thing we've really focused on uh, yeah. is to kind of create that sort of environment for people. Yeah, so I yeah. think people, you tell. I think people are shocked when they come in. They're like, I can't do this. I'm nervous. And they go in and they're like, oh, my God, that wasn't scary. I was nervous the first time when I went. Um, I went with Kevin. Yeah. I'm like, yo, Kevin, slide with me, man. I'm, I'm shitting myself going to this thing. Right. Um, and then after, it's like, oh, man, that was so unexpected. I'm like, when are we going to come back? Like, you know what I mean? I was, right. And I had never felt like that after working out. Because like I said, um, up, up until that moment, it's always been just me working out by myself. Right. So it was a really nice concept for me to, to be introduced to. Let me ask you. What has been like one of your most memorable moments um, having this business, whether it, it's related to the building of the business where it's related, whether it's related to an impact you made in somebody's life as a result of having the business, what comes to mind? I mean, there's so many. Um, I think one of the really cool things is to see the relationships that have come out of it. Mm -hmm. Like I met my boyfriend at Barry's, my business partner, Derek, met his wife at Barry's, Jeez. my other business partner, Whitney, met her husband through Barry's. So like wow. we've all like met and we've, we've seen so many of And then you happen. guys met through Berries oh, in, and then we in met California. Through, yeah, then we met through Berries. I think all of our friends are through Berries. It's kind of like this weird cult that we started, but it's not, yeah. really, it's not really a cult, obviously. But um, it's kind of like like-minded people together will stick together. Yeah. Um, but I think seeing the babies that have come out of it, we've seen so many Berries babies. That, Berries babies. Yeah. Like we, like, you know, Lisa Thompson and Drew Rosenhaus. You know, Drew Rosenhaus, they come every single day. Wow. And... Lisa was the first person I think that was pregnant 
and she worked out until like 10 days after she was it was like some ridiculous amount like she was just running on the treadmill and yeah she came back to work out as soon as she could come back and she did that for all four babies and to see her and all these other women do it it's just really um a, a wild thing and it's kind of like all kind of like the precipice of for it was was berries so it was that's really exciting to see well one of the coolest things as a marketer you know ethics is very big and and for everybody but it's specifically in my and i feel in my case it's very big because my job is to put people out there and the product or the service that i'm helping sell has to be something that's helping people right and what more beautiful way to make money uh than to make money while helping people get healthier yeah. and having you know uh strong emotional intelligence and being able to manage mental health issues or whatever working out does for them i think that's incredible right and you could be doing so many other things but you right. know you're, you're thriving off something like that so that's cool that's really cool man i think selfishly i originally started it because i like the workout and i was like oh if i own it then i'll be forced to do it and i'll <laughs> be forced to be healthy which is kind of you know what happened but um i we're so grateful every single day that we get to do what we do obviously like there's a shelf life for everything in life yeah. you know we eventually will want to move on one day um, but for now, like, we're just so happy to be where we are and to see the community that we've built and all of our friends. It's like every day we go to work, it's like going to hang out with your friends. You know, yeah. it's not like work, work, yeah. which is really, really nice. All right. Well, with that being said, James, I do have some specific questions I jotted down that I would like to ask you. Let's go. So we could go through rapid fire. Yeah. Okay. Can you discuss the role of digital marketing in attracting new members to Barry's? Yeah. So we recently hired kevin yeah about a year and a half kevin pimentel ago. yeah yeah so he's really been instrumental in kind of helping us with paid advertisement through social media yeah um before that i was kind of handling it and like you know meta kind of changed things up it used to be really easy to do on your own yeah. um we never really saw the results because i didn't know how to track it properly now it's such a huge driver for us like yeah. so anything that we do we run ads for and i think it's so good just for brand visibility to begin with just yeah. so people know that you're here if people see berries 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 enough then you know they'll be like, oh, like what is this? Yeah. Um, same thing with Equinox. Like I get so many Equinox ads and Anatomy ads. Mm -hmm. and I just think it's so important for visibility. Period. Yeah. Um, I would say also we use it a lot for promotion. So if we want like first time on us, we can target you know everyone that is, has never been to Berries, and we can pull that data. And you know it's it's like smart data now. I feel like before we didn't have that capability, and right. now we can kind of target exactly what we want. And More we, granular. Yeah, and I think it's super important, but it's been a huge driver for us. Like we're seeing like very, very, very good results with it. And Kevin's always blown away by by how well it's performing. Well, it's a two-parter. It's uh, doing a good job on digital marketing and it's going back to the community aspect that you were talking about. Because right. there, there's, there's no community. Right. Um, people are not gonna wanna come back. Right. People stay here because of the community. But, but community part we have down. So like, yeah. I'm not worried that once they go through the doors, they won't love the product. It's just getting them there. Yeah, you're, it, the, the the main issue, or it's not even an issue, but the main focus is getting them through the door because you already know that you have you, you already have what it takes to to be able to retain. Right. It's just a matter of getting them through the door. Right. Um, with so much noise out there, right? There's so right. many people, they're seeing so many ads, so many things, so many possibilities that they have is yeah. just come through the door and you'll, you'll get a taste. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so that's when instrumental for us how do you balance between retaining existing clients and attracting new ones in your marketing approach so we have kind of two different things mm -hmm. to retain the clients that we have we run a lot of um internal promotions like challenges and stuff like that that kind mm -hmm. of help people get together so like 20 classes in 30 days and get a prize at the end so people kind of get competitive with each other okay um so that's kind of like one thing that we use to re help retain clients to get new clients, I mean, some of our biggest campaigns have always been like referral. We always believe like it should come from within. Mm -hmm. I'd rather like our own customers sell it to their people. It's the best way. Yeah, and so we have one coming up that we've done before, but we always like, kind of rebrand it and kind of change a few things here and there. But it's called like plus one. So essentially like you and a client, you know, like the client, you the client, um, would sign up through our type form and you suggest your friend who's going to come and we book you in together. We comp both of those classes so you guys are taking it together. And then we give you, the client, another class on us or a credit to use toward your membership. And then the the new client will get like an exclusive starter pack. It's like three classes for $50. Nice. Um, so like those are some of the things that we've done to kind of like gain new clients. Um, so you market to the second, third, and fourth visit, which is very important. Yeah. Not just come check this out. No, it's like, hey, like, let's continue to see how we progress. Right. And I think it's important that like when new people come, they come with someone who's already like a brand loyalist because mm -hmm. they sell it for us. We don't have to do it. Yeah. 
like they can already see like oh this person's part of a community and kevin sold me yeah <laughs> um another weird tactic that we figured out works really well is like hosting huge happy hours like people love to see people outside of the gym and, and like dressed oh, up wow. in clothes so we've done things where we've rented out like live nightclub we had like 1100 people at live back Badass? in january yeah <laughs> that's so cool yeah so we'll do like happy hours we did like our anniversary party with like 1100 people and a lot of them are not current barry's clients but they come and they're like oh my god this is so cool so the days after these huge parties that we have are always our busiest days because everyone's like oh my god we're working out in the morning and it's like the rider dies james that's super cool man I, had, yeah. I didn't even know that you guys did that yeah so we just that's had, out of the box yeah so we just had one at the standard it was a little uh -huh. a little bit smaller because it ended up raining but i mean we still had a couple hundred people that came out and it's just nice to be able to like connect with people on a more human level and not just such in a transactional way and yeah and speaking of transactional you know you're going out of your way to do those things those things take time take effort take money um but they add to to the community yeah you know, a lot of people won't do that you know whatever you came and work out you get get their membership but no going above and beyond is what allows you to do what you've done which is grow through multiple locations and have that community a close tight knit community aspect i think that's awesome i think that one thing that we're so focused on and barry's as a brand is so focused on is that it's not just a workout it's a full lifestyle uh -huh. you know what i mean it's like like i said it's like where we met the people that we're dating or married to it's where you meet your friends it creates a whole community that's not just within the red room it carries out like you know i've seen so many birthday parties and i look it's like all of our various clients and half of our trainers like th they all become family yeah and it creates such a strong like-minded community in a city i think that typically you didn't really have that before um or you did have it but like if you were not privy to it you know yeah. then miami can seem like a lonely place or can seem a little bit too much party if that's not your jam it's true you know what i mean so I think people didn't realize that there was this community and it's a very large community. Yeah, you made it cool. Yeah. You made it cool to do that. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to. I remember um, our mutual friend, Olivia Ormos, which has been on the podcast as well. So check it out, guys. She's she's awesome. Um, she always posts her working out. And I, I remember seeing it before when it was Barry's boot camp. I'm like, damn, Olivia must be getting her ass kicked at that boot camp place. <laughs> uh, but it looks good because she's, she, was, she was looking great. I'm like, damn, I got to check it out. Um, but I didn't go until it was berries. Okay. So um, it's good to understand why there was that, there was that name drop. There yeah. is a lot of businesses dropping names. Yeah. Like St. Laurent. It's St. Laurent. It was Yves St. Laurent. D Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin'. Yeah. Oh, sometimes you got to evolve, man. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, luckily for us, it just kind of put us in like a, I feel like it almost like elevated the brand. Mm -hmm. It went from like this mom and pop sort of like boot camp where you think it's gonna be like this grungy thing to berries which is now a luxury like a luxury brand yeah you know? yeah that's the vibe i get so. yeah all right so in a competitive market like miami james what unique offerings does berries provide to its customers i would say it's just the community yeah um i've joined gyms here and they're great and everyone does a fantastic job but i don't get the same sort of sense of community mm -hmm. that large of a scale Right. You know what I mean? If you're going to Barry's, it's 50 people every hour. So 50 new people every single hour. Um, so that you're exposed to a lot of people. You're meeting a lot of people really quickly. If you're going to the happy hours, there are like two, three, four, five, six hundred people. Um, I think that's probably something that unique that we really do. Other than that, like we have so many, I don't want to say our competitors, but like our, you know, our neighbors are all doing fantastic. You know, I think everyone now is in this like mindset where health and wellness is at the forefront. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people like, whether you come to Barry's or you go to any other fitness just studio, just be active. Like you don't, mm -hmm. I know that Barry's is not for everybody and that's fine. Yeah, that's cool. You know, and I just encourage people to just be active. So um, I think that's really the one way that we set ourselves apart from our from our neighbors and our friends. And it's good to understand that uh, with, uh, with uh, you know, people in the fitness community with a lot of these guided workouts, you do have other people that do visit other gyms yeah. and they visit other fitness centers and and yours is part of their routine and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. yeah. I would say it's like nice to diversify, right? Like yeah. I still like going to spin classes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like nice for me to step out of my element and, you know, experience other things and experience other studios and stuff like that. Yeah. But I was always a spinner. So for me, it's like my my sort of like vacation from from work yeah know, vacation from the workout that i have to do every day you, how often do you work out i try to do like five six times a week oh dude you're you're on top of it i'm trying yeah i like, I like to eat so i gotta i gotta keep oh up you like it. to eat yeah <laughs> gotta cancel it out <laughs> all right um how important is the role of community okay we already went over that how does barry's leverage partnerships or collaborations for marketing purposes we talked a little bit about this as we were walking in yeah i mean listen i think 
we have a partnership with Path Water, mm-hmm. um, so we co-brand with them for that. And but that's on a, a more corporate level. Locally, I think we utilize a lot of partnerships, such as like we partner with you know Groot Hospitality. So then yep. we do stuff with Live Nightclub, and you know we do corporate partnerships. So all of their employees come in and they get corporate memberships and corporate rates. Um, we get like different sponsorships for for um, for alcohol, and you know they help us kind of throw these huge parties and everything as well. Mm. But then we, we try to push them. We do things like in studio, we'll do like a treadmill and tequila event and you try to give them exposure and give bottles to clients. And now they're discovering a new type of tequila. Treadmill and tequila. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Or or run lift rosé, you know? So like all these like fun things mixing what would typically not be at a gym. Run lift rosé. Yeah. That sounds nice. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? (laughs) Um, You know, so we do certain partnerships like that. Like we just had the whole partnership with the standard where they give every Thursday a certain number of spots that our members can sign up for and go use the pool. And then we have a certain number of spots that they can send their members to Barry's to take class on us. So it's like a nice mutual trade. You really know how to leverage re- these relationships into really creative ways of bringing value to your uh, to your consumers. That's super cool. Yeah, and like, listen, I'm also surrounded by my colleagues who are all super smart and fantastic. So I we're a small team, but I have like you know Evan and Julie and um, David who work with me, and they're so smart with these partnerships. Like I was the one who started it, but then um, they learned from me very quickly early on, like how it works, and now they're coming up with some of the bigger partnerships and the better ideas, which is fantastic. Yeah. You're pioneering a lot of this stuff. We're, we're trying to. Yeah. <laughs> and and when you're at the top like that and you're being creative, you got to keep being creative because everybody's watching. Yeah. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. No. Oh, but that's good that you have a team that's like understanding what you like, what right. the values are like, what the business stands for, because it makes it much easier for, for them to put two and two together and connect dots, especially yeah. with all the volume of people coming through, you know? For sure. Because if they, if they are part of the community, they're working out, they're going to the extracurricular activities. Now they know that you're open to creating extracurricular activities, which means that now you're being pitch things that could potentially work for you yeah. maybe not everything works but you always have like a pool of ideas that you're able to tap into to yeah. continue to s- expand the business yeah yeah so another partnership that we did which was really interesting was right in the middle of covid it was like february of 2021 uh-huh. we did we partnered with the miami dolphins okay and we did a charity class at the dolphin stadium and we mm. fit 300 people in the middle of covid to work out outdoors there you go um, it was hosted by Drew Rosenhaus. He brought a bunch of the NFL players. But we did it on the field at the stadium. Um, and so that was really cool. And it was all for charity. But then um, the way that we did it, people had to like walk through the suites at the stadium. And so they use it as a selling point to try to sell suites to Beautiful. people. So it was kind of like we didn't have to pay to do anything there. They handled all the production for everything. But for them, it was a selling opportunity to kind of showcase like what they have. Strategic partnerships are a huge play. Yeah. When they're beneficial for both sides, they're beautiful ways of growing. Yeah. It's how I've scaled most of my career, man. Uh, whether it's for like my personal brand or my, my actual brands themselves, partnerships are key. Yeah. I with mean, the right people, you know? And I'm happy to do trades for everything. Like, yeah. you know, if people want to trade, like, I feel like. Barters. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's almost like a fun, like, little currency that we have. But I'm happy to help people out all the time because at the end of the day, like, people need to help each other out. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's see. We got a few in here um, that I want to knock out. Um, okay. Can you talk about the importance of personal trainers in your business and how you and how you market this aspect to your customers? You mean like the actual trainers that we have? Yeah, the actual trainers that you have. I mean, I think it's so important to find someone. We call them enter trainers, right? Enter so, trainers. Yeah, so okay. they're they're trainers, but they're also entertaining you because that's right. It's a fifty minute class, mm-hmm. and they're juggling managing the treadmills and counting down the people on the floor, and you're essentially teaching two separate groups at the same time and merging mm-hmm. them together and make sure the timing is right. The beat drops are on. The music is right. The lighting is correct. Um, I think it's our driving factor. You know what I mean? Like without that, I don't think we have a business. Yeah. So I mean, we've had trainers in the past that maybe weren't the strongest, and people give you one shot. But if people like you as a trainer, it becomes addictive, and they want to know who you are. They want to hang out with you. They almost become like the the little, like little mini celebrities, and they become they a huge driving factor for us because yeah. like they're our selling point. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say all of our trainers right now are pretty much all at the same level. Like they're all phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and we're really fortunate about that because it's the first time I think in, in history that we've we've had that. 
Yeah, it's cool because, you know, I recently interviewed Frank EP from Y100 on the podcast. And he talks about how the, you know, the, the radio stations use the, the radio host as their influencers, as, you know, their, the driving force for, for business for them, whether it's for partnerships, whether it's for, for whatever it is. And, and in a sense, I'm seeing it be that way uh, with your setup, which is, you know, you know, you have the infrastructure, you have the business, but everything and, and you know, absolutely everything is how people relate to the person that's guiding them. Right. Um, and if you have if, if you have staff that's well trained that knows what they're doing that love what they do that's gonna you know skyrocket your business right. you know it's not just about having a physical location right. it's not stuff have brick and mortar let's set it up let's charge prices it's not just about that it's not just about uh, the physical aspect of what you're selling maybe merch or or what you have like you know the quality stuff in the bathrooms which is very good but also like how people are treated and how they feel right and one thing that we talk about a lot too is yet yeah, there has to be some sort of standardized like. On you know Mondays it's going to be arms and abs, but other than that, we try to let people kind of have the freedom to do what they want. So they all plan their own workouts, they all plan their own playlists. So every class is going to be a hundred percent different. You're never going to get the same class and the same person. Interesting. So we want them to also have their own personality because you might go to a class and you're like, this guy's an asshole. Like I don't ever want to take this person. But some people might like that more aggressive or need that or need that, yeah. you know, and some other people like want to be coddled. So they'll go to the class that maybe like the trainer might be a little more friendly and bubbly and a little more light. So mm. we try to like not tell people how to. You give them creative freedom in a sense. Yeah, to a, to a certain extent. extent. Obviously, if it's not resonating, they're like, hey, like these traits might not be resonating. Maybe focus more on A, B, C and D versus yeah. the rest. Um, but like it's that's our number one driving factor of the trainers. Yeah. The trainers build the community and like they're kind of like the foundation for us beautiful yeah i'm glad that that's important to you yeah how do you measure the success of your marketing efforts um I mean, outside of money yeah you I know mean, outside of revenue yeah i mean listen we we have a lot of stats we look at um we look at attendance we look at first timers first timer conversion we look at all of that a lot of it's instinctual. Like you can see if something's working, and even if it's not working, I think just having any sort of brand exposure is successful. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're you're seeing an actual result or not, everything is trial and error. I think the more you get yourself out there, the better that it is. The more that people see you, I think that's super important. Um, but other than that, like it's really more instinctual with everything that we do and how we track it. Um, aside from the actual hard numbers. Yeah. So intuitiveness and also uh, data driven decisions are important. Yeah. Yeah. And we do a lot of data driven decisions, but a lot of what we do is is instinctual. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of trial and error. You're like, oh, I've done this before. This doesn't work, but this portion did. Let's take that and you know do A, B, C, and D. Yeah. Um, also, whenever we have sort of um, brainstorming, like I always say, like tell all the stupid ideas because we have so many times where we like throw down all the stupid ideas we're like wait a minute but this works and this works and this works and we've had Piece some of our, our most successful campaigns by being born from like a stupid idea that we thought was stupid yeah and then it ended up being some of the best things for us yeah you have to be open-minded and and that's the importance of like you know you mentioned community yeah of, of your staff feeling like their ideas matter right and you know not necessarily everything that is thrown at the wall needs to stick, right. but the fact that things can be vocalized and that 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 there is leadership that is willing to listen right. and also implement and willing to try new things is key because that that creates an environment where people want to continue to stay because they feel like their voice is heard, their ideas are articulated, they're brought to life, and that that's a very big part of being able to retain good people that bring you more good people yeah. uh, in the sense of maybe helping you bring more staff, but also helping you bring customers that then recognize that. And then as a whole, that's the vibe now, that echo chamber, just right. it's understood that things operate this way and it makes things much easier to flow. Everybody's in the same frequency. Right. Yeah, good stuff, bro. Yeah. All right, last question I have for you is, what advice would you give to someone looking to start their own fitness business and trying to develop an effective marketing plan? I would say do what I did and start at a front desk at another gym and mm -hmm. see how it runs operationally because then you can see what works and what doesn't. So I started working at a cycle studio in LA when we knew that we were going to buy the rights to this. Mm -hmm. And I worked there for almost nine months to a year, between nine months and a year, mm -hmm. just learning from the bottom up operationally what it looked like because I didn't want to do it at Barry's because I wanted to have a different perspective and a different point of view. Yeah, I think that was super important to me because mm -hmm. I was coming from a consumer standpoint versus from the trainers or from Barry's perspective. Um, I think really knowing your market 
really strongly. Like mm-hmm. we came back to Miami and I sp- lived here for six, seven months before we even signed on a space because I wanted to just Im- immerse myself into the market and take as many fitness classes and different studios, see what the talent was, see what the demand was, see what you know people's schedules were. I came from LA where everything was five, six, seven in the morning sold out, whereas Miami, everyone's like, no, no, 9.30. So I think doing that to understand your market just on a more like, you know, micro level, I think is, is really important. Um, it's, it's kind of like when we brought berries here, we said it's, everyone's like, oh, it's like Starbucks. But it's not like Starbucks. Cause like you can put a Starbucks everywhere and it's a very consistent product. You have to change certain things per market. We didn't realize like what we'd have to change here. And one of them being dropping the word boot camp. Mm-hmm. Um, Berries wasn't necessarily a luxury brand when we bought it here. Everything was like green and brown. I wanted it to feel like luxury. So like I think immersing yourself in that market really for a good amount of time before you actually and you read the room. In. You read the room. You have yeah. to like really pay attention and pay attention to the small things. Like mm. are people going to the bathroom? Are they using the products? Do they like the products? What are they looking for? Like are they missing certain things? Mm. Um just asking questions to a lot of people to find out like what they like, what they dislike and figuring out you know, from the trainer's perspective, like, are you happy here? Like, what do you like about working here? What don't you like? I think it's really important to like listen to people and kind of learn from everyone else's mistakes. It sounds like the vir- the virtue of patience has been a very big factor in in your success this far because, you know, you did, I don't know, six, nine months in that front desk. You came to Miami. You didn't uh, immediately try to like get into a lease or like start, you, you take time to understand things. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, for me, at least in the past, I've, I've done things taking my time and I've also done things that I rushed and I wish I wouldn't have. Right. Um, and I think that's very important because uh, in, in today's world, you, you'll hear a lot of advice of just get it done, go quick, do it fast. Right. And yeah, y- you want to move. Right. But the part that you're discussing right now is very important right. and often uh, overlooked. Just right. take your time, understand well, what you're doing before you before you take such a massive risk. Right. Well, I learned that from my, my, sorry, my business partner, Whitney, she was always like, you know what? Like, sleep on it, like take a week, like nothing is like, we're not doing brain surgery. Like this is not an urgent matter. There's nothing urgent, unless like someone says like, listen, we're on a deadline. It's not an urgent matter. So take your time, really think about it. Day to day, your your, your emotions and your feelings about it are probably gonna change, like whether yeah. positive or negative. And you'll know like what I feel today, I might not necessarily feel tomorrow or the next day. Um, just like when we were coming back, I went to college here and at the time, Brooklyn was like the spot. Mm-hmm. And South Beach, I think, had taken a turn and it kind of gotten a little more quiet. It was right after the recession. Yep. Um, and so when we were coming back, I'm like, we got to do Brickle. We're only doing Brickle. Like, that's all I want is Brickle. And then as soon as we, the first, like, kind of like familiarization trip that we did when I brought Derek here, we were driving around and someone said, like, you should really do the beach. Like, the beach is kind of where everything starts and then kind of, you spreads know, from there. spreads from there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, no, I don't want to do it. And then we ended up signing on the space on the beach and it ended up being the best thing for us. I think it would have been a completely different beast had we launched anywhere else okay so i'm i'm, I'm i've learned a lot today so i, I <laughs> yeah. no for real i appreciate it uh i learned patience um i learned um open-mindedness right uh, all of these things that you're sharing is um you don't want to be um, or at least it's my opinion that you don't want to be that boss that is just, it's, it's what i say or the highway no it's that you listen to your customers you listen to your staff you listen to your business partners you listen to yourself yeah you take time to do things um it's very important to really analyze self-imposed deadlines sometimes we give ourselves some self-imposed deadlines and then we make bad decisions because we gave that deadline but we're the one that created the deadline right so that this has been very very cool man because i I've, I've seen your your business i've right. been in your business and i've enjoyed your business and it's also cool to see the mind behind the people that create these things you know right. they, these are these are big communities like, after all there is a lot of heart and soul that goes behind it which i think people don't realize yeah i think they see it as just like a brand but we are still very mom and pop like i'm there every day derek's there every day like we're all there yeah you work out with your clients working out with people like we're i'm we're there we're there as consumers as well um so we we try to stay as mom and pop as we can without feeling too corporate yeah i've been told because kevin's like dude he works out with like his clients he's there in the business and it's 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 cool and then that's how i talk to people and i listen to people and like figure out when there's an issue because if i can't fix something if if i don't know that it's wrong yeah and people won't necessarily like call in or email or anything like that but they'll talk about you you know they'll they'll talk about in like the locker room as you're getting dressed Mm -hmm. it's your brand yeah so that was important to us where can we find you or the businesses on social media how can people learn more about you or the business or berries yeah so if you go to um 
just at Barry's B A R R Y S on Instagram. Beautiful That's our, our main account. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also Barry's.com. Everything is on the website, all yeah. of our pricing, all the memberships, everything that we have is on there. Beautiful. How about James? Are you active on socials or are you more behind the scenes? Um, I do work related stuff on socials. Yeah. So if you want to go on J Preventure, it's J P R O V E N C H E R. Um, I'm on there, but it's always like I post a lot of like the the marketing stuff that we're doing on there. Awesome. Yeah. Well, everything that we've discussed today, uh, including all of the locations, everything is going to be linked on our show notes. Awesome. So everybody listening, um, if you enjoyed this conversation, if you want to learn a little bit more, uh, whatever platform you're streaming on right now, go to the notes. You'll be able to see all the show notes or you could go to hustleinspiresustle.com forward slash podcast and you will see the page with James, everything about James, everything about this episode. And yeah, James, thanks so much for making it out here. I really appreciate your time, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Guys, this is Alex Quinn, Hustle Inspires Hustle Podcast, live from HGAP Studios in Miami with James Preventure. I'll see you on the next episode.